Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus 23, today verses 16 and 17. Here they are. Also, you shall observe the feast of the harvest of the first fruits of your labors from what you sow in the field. Also, the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in the fruit of your labors from the field. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord God. So I want you to notice that this is, these are the next two. We talked about the first one yesterday, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Here are two more. And these feasts, there's three times a year and all the males appear. Remember that in Israel, I know this isn't going to go down too well for some of you, but what can you say? The male, it is a patriocentric culture. God designed it so that the male is the spiritual leader. He leads the spiritual community. And here the males have to appear before the Lord in each of these three feasts throughout the year. And so it's right there at, at that verse 17. You, it's just there. You can't go around it. It's in the Bible. It's God's plan. Now, these feasts, if we were to go and look at where they fit in the time in the agricultural cycle, these feasts always occur just before or just after a major uh, part where they're either sowing things or harvesting things. There's been a major part, like a harvest has happened. These feasts always kind of come just after that. So there's a sense of accomplishment, right? You go and you do this feast and you've done the things you needed to do. You know, you've, you've brought in the the hay or, you know, whatever the things are, and you have accomplished that, and you can feel a sense of accomplishment. You've done what needed to be done. You were doing, fulfilling your duty. You helped your family. You put things in order, and now you're clear. Your, your slate is clear. You can go worship God plainly. So God has set this up not just for convenience, but people can come to worship him with a sense of accomplishment. And so, you know, God's kingdom is a kingdom where there's some degree of activity involved. You and I today, we have trouble with this. You know, what we're used to do, a lot of people, they're doing couch surfing, they're, they're on their phones, they're just kind of like lump sitting, and, and, and we've all suffered from this at different times. You get so tired, and then, and then instead of going to bed, you sit and you do, you're surfing on your phone, you're just looking at this and that random thing, and how many times have you looked at your phone and you suddenly realize you're watching some piece of nonsense, you really didn't need to spend the last period of time watching that, you didn't need to know that information, and yet you've burned up part of your time, the time you want to draw close to God, you've burned it up on some ridiculous thing, maybe you watched cat videos, whatever it was, and it's not that you can't watch a cat video, but Life is a solemn thing. It's a, it's a tremendous gift, so we want to work together with God and not work against him. So let's let him help us um, grow. And here we see some people who do what they need to do. They go to the feast. Notice here there's no basis for non-participation because uh, the timing is such that people can be involved. You can worship God on the seventh day. God has arranged it that way. Maybe your work doesn't want you to have Sabbath off, but you can work that out, and if that's a priority, you can you can do that, or maybe do a different job. So let's let's be faithful to him, and he will make a way. If you're struggling with a Sabbath Sunday issue or a Sabbath observance issue, God will help you. But you have to be faithful. You have to do your part, and God will break in and help and open the way, so you can keep the Sabbath holy. See you tomorrow.